we thank you very much for your coming and for your patience. Uh, we've invited you this morning, this afternoon, uh, to have a brief conversation with you. Uh, we'll entreat you to give us all the attention. Um, our general secretary will address you um, on the matters that we have to share with you, the press. Uh, we hope that it will be very brief. And if you have questions after his presentation, we'll take a few questions uh, after that. So ladies, ladies and gentlemen, I present. Okay. Um, we have uh, on our head table um, some executives of our party. Uh, we have uh, on my extreme left, uh, Laji Masaudu, who is um, our third vice. Um, Chairman Bute is here with us. Uh, I have uh, our, di our Director of Finance and Admin, Mr. William Yamwa, is here. Our Deputy General Secretary, uh, Prof. Haruna, is here with us. Uh, my, one of my Deputy Directors of Communication, uh, Mr. Asiedu Kukro, is here. And uh, Mr. Ernesto Wusubempa is here uh, with us. Uh, other executives will be joining us, and when they do, I will introduce them. Uh, but to the main event, and the reason we called you here, the General Secretary of the New Patriotic Party, Mr. Kodia Frimpong. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Director of Communication. But you forgot to acknowledge that is your, your strong organizers. Yes, yes, the yes. National Organizer, Henry Nanabuache, Salam Mustafa, the National Youth Organizer, and Aziz Futa, the National Nasara Coordinator. Wow. Mr. Chairman, our friends from the media, good afternoon to all of you. It's a bit unusual that uh, we have summoned you today or invited you today to the party headquarters for a press conference. Now, I know many of you are wondering where the discussions uh, will flow, but just fasten your seatbelt. It will be an interesting press conference. I will take this opportunity to welcome our friends from the media and commend you for honoring our invitation at this short notice. As a party, we have invited you here to communicate the new patriotic party's position on recent developments in the country, including the prevailing social economic conditions. Fellow Ghanaians, we cannot begin this press engagement without speaking on recent developments about the economy. As we have previously admitted, our dear country has in the past few months endured some challenging socioeconomic conditions partly attributed to the adverse impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic and, the, and worsened by the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war. Depreciation of the city against major trading currencies, particularly the dollar, surged in prices of petroleum products a rising inflation nearly destabilized the local economy. As the ruling political party and as national officers of this great party, the New Patriotic Party, we received numerous petitions from the length and breadth of the country, which employed us and the government to urgently address these social economic conditions which had increased cost of living for ordinary Ghanaian and nearly suffocating businesses. Consequently, the leadership of the new patriotic party had several engagements with government with the view to addressing the legitimate concerns so expressed. It is heartwarming that following these engagements, Remedial interventions put in place by the Kufuado government are gradually yielding results. And indeed, you cannot attest to it. 
as evidenced by all and sundry, the city has, in the past few weeks or two, witnessed significant gains in value, appreciating by some 63.7% against the American dollar as of December 2015, 2022. This appreciation has been widely described by many economic watchers as an unprecedented feat in the history of our country. Interestingly, our political opponents, as usual of them, when they were blaming government policies for the city depreciation, are now saying we should not attribute the gains to the government interventions. So we ask if government can be blamed for city depreciation, why can't this same government be credited for the appreciation in the value of the city? Anyway, we leave this to the judgment of you discerning Ghanaians, and that's typical of the NDC. We also find it as gratifying that owing to the massive appreciation in the value of the city, prices of petroleum products at the pump have reduced resulting in a 15.3 reduction in transport fares as announced by the transport unions. Although I must admit that these developments may not entirely address the prevailing social economic condition in the country, we do believe strongly that they may offer a sigh of relief to Ghanaians, especially as we approach the festive season. Certainly, there could not have been a better Christmas gift to all of us. And indeed, we must commend this government. On the account of city depreciation, reduction in the fuel prices, transport fares, we appeal to all manufacturers and traders to also reduce prices of, com of commodities to conform with this reality. Please, we beg you, for the sake of this country, as you cannot attest, that prices of transport fares and petroleum product has come down. Kindly also reduce prices of your commodities. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is public knowledge that during the recent socio-economic upheavals, our political opponent, the NDC, tried without success to take the advantage of the situation for undeserving political mileage. The NDC and Mahama never missed any opportunity to lash out at government, even though they knew that the challenges were mainly caused by external factors. Indeed, this position was recently confirmed by the IMF through its managing director, Kristalina Dojiva, who on the 5th of September 2022 at the African Adaptation Summit in the Netherlands stated categorically that the economic challenges confronting Ghana cannot be attributed to government policies, but rather exogenous shocks occasion by COVID-19 pandemic and Russia-Ukraine war. She added that, but for these external factors, the Ghanaian economy would have remained strong and resilient. But for these external factors, Ghanaian economy would have remained strong and resilient. Ladies and gentlemen, it is interesting that even the NDC Dramani Mahama completely agrees with the MPP government and the IMF that indeed the COVID pandemic and the war in Ukraine are the root causes of our current social economic challenges. Except that for Dramani, His Excellency, he only makes this admission when he's addressing international audiences. However, he tells Ghanaians to blame the Kufuado government for all economic woes and not COVID and in Ukraine-Russian war. Whenever he goes outside, he admits it. But when he comes to Ghana, he turns to something else. How opportunistic. We in the MPP do not shy away from our records. 
and are ready to debate our political opponents on any day. Yes. The Ghanaian people are the best judges. The Ghanaian people have not forgotten the records of John Mahama and the NDC. The Ghanaian people are very much aware of the fact that during their tenure, even without any global economic crisis, the John Mahama-led NDC government was so overwhelmed by their own incompetence that they could not even keep our lives on. Planting this country into darkness for four years while destroying many livelihoods. As we can all attest today, the Dunso crisis was fixed in the first year of a Kufuad administration. <laughs> then this year, Mahama could also not implement any social intervention program to mitigate the suffering, the suffering of Ghanaians, to make matters worse. The existing ones were either destroyed or canceled by them. Mention can be made of teacher training allowance nursing training allowance, among others. Even the irony of it was that even teachers who were recruited for over a year, they were never paid. When they were going to be paid, a directive was given that, oh, we can only pay you three months. What happened to the remaining eight months? But in our case, despite the lingering impacts of the global pandemic and Russia-Ukraine war, resulting in the worst global social economic crisis in more than seven decades, the MPP government led by President Kufuado is still able to sustain its ambitious interventions, such as the Free Senior High School, One District, One Factory Initiative, among others. We have also been able to consistently pay salaries on time, and we have undertaken unprecedented building of roads and railway infrastructure, and we throw challenge to NDC to produce this. Even more significantly, we have been able to keep lights on. Today, there's no doing so in Ghana, in spite of all the economic challenges that we have. So, ladies and gentlemen, the difference between us and the NDC is clear. The evidence shows clearly that even in the worst of times, we are better managers of the economy than the NDC. Ladies and gentlemen, at this janta, let me take this opportunity to, to extend a hearty congratulation to the newly elected national executives of the NDC at their just ended 10th National Annual Delegate Congress of the party. We equally commend them, the NDC, for holding their internal elections at various levels. We all know that multi-party democracy is at the heart of every democratic society. It is the most important significant measure of the strength of a country's democratic tenants. If Ghana is to live up to its accolade as the bastion of democracy in Africa, it is equally imperative that we build a robust democracy that breaks new grounds and serve as blueprint for other countries in Africa and beyond. The MPP wants to contest the 2024 general elections with a resilient opposition, a united NDC, not a disintegrated NDC, so, we will have no, so that they will have no excuse when we beat them in the elections. There will not be any, any reason for them to say that because they had weak leadership. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to use this opportunity to reiterate our condemnation of violence and hooliganism that characterize the buildup to the National Democratic Congress, their National Congress, and to appeal to them that violence should not have any place in our body politic. Much as the MPP agrees with the former president, John Dramani Muhammad, that NDC is second to none when it comes to unleashing violence owing to their revolutionary background, we believe strongly that such reckless comments inside, inside their party tax and vigilantes to perpetrate violence such as we witnessed in Cape Coast. We wish 
to use this occasion in the interest of the nation to admonish the Seidun Ketia led national executives to take steps to reform the NDC and get rid of the party's addiction to violence. Yes. Yes. Indeed, your mama was right then, and is still right today. No political party can match their records when it comes to political violence. We in the MPP can certainly not compete with the NDC in unleashing violence because we love our dear country, Ghana. That's right. That's right. That's right. It is thus an established fact that the NDC has no regard for the nation's laws. They have no regard for our criminal codes and certainly the Vigilantism and Related Offenses Act. It is not surprising that, as we speak, the Ghana police has declared as most wanted 16 tags of the NDC for their violent conduct at their just ended youth and women conference in Cape Coast. They virtually turned their Congress into a war zone. We encourage members of the general public to assist the police with, inf with information that will lead to the arrest of these NDC vigilantes to make them face the full regress of the law. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Following the public outrage and condemnation of the violence that marred the NDC Congress at Cape Coast, many would have thought that the party's Congress in Accra would have been incident free. It is very sad of what we witnessed about the shocking physical assault of Jeanette Nabila the General Secretary of People's National Convention Party. By some vigilantes of the Andes, resulting in her hospitalization. It's very sad for the democracy of our country. Her only crime was that she honored an invitation extended to her party by the NDC in line with existing inter-party courtesies where opposing parties are invited to deliver solidarity messages during such events. It's very shame that a colleague general secretary of a, not a smaller party, but not people's national convention could attend the program and be assaulted. Ladies and gentlemen, the Ghanaian public will bear as witness to audios and videos on circulation in which the national chairman of the NDC, Mr. Isidi Ketia, admits that the leadership of the party knew that they lost the 2020 general elections, that they knew they lost. But yet, they still went ahead to deceive their supporters and lie to Ghanaian, uh, to Ghanaian people that the elections was rigged. In pursuit of their clandestine agenda, the NDC, he said, went ahead to challenge the election results at the Supreme Court without a shred of evidence. The NPP had hoped that the NDC would have used the occasion of their Congress to render an unqualified apologies to the nation judiciary and to the good people of Ghana for such unpatriotic and disgraceful conduct which portends a great danger to our democracy and stability of our dear country, Ghana. Unfortunately, it never happened, which is typical of the NDC. Even when they are wrong, they will not admit it. Instead, they continue with their campaign of hate against the judiciary, scandalizing and attacking the very integrity of our revered judges without any justification. And this is indeed shameful. It smacks of dishonesty for Jomama and the NDC leadership to lie to their supporters that they won the 2020 elections and ask them to jubilate. In fact, the NDC supporters were virtually asked by their leaders to seek justice on the streets because the Electoral Commission has stolen the elections for the MPP. These supporters also blindly followed their leaders and went to town terrorizing innocent Ghanaians going about their normal business. Some of their supporters were so much incited that they had violent confrontation with state security personnel. In case maybe you have forgotten, 
we will play you a video to see what happened after the 2020 elections. At least you cannot attest to what happened after the elections. And you can see known faces of NDC leaders leading some people to go on the street to cause chaos. Meanwhile, it don't have a case. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the conspiracy to destabilize the country was so deeply rooted in the NDC that their members of parliament, led by Honorable Haruna Ejusu, the, the National Democratic Congress NDC legislators started their walk from Parliament House through Ridge to the headquarters of the Electoral Commission in Accra. At the Ridge roundabout, they were met by the police who asked them not to go beyond the barricade they had created. Not happy with this instruction, the group tried to go a bit further, which resulted in a scuffle. After the minority members pushed through at the Ridge roundabout, the police stopped them once again in front of the Ridge Hospital. Here again, they forced their way through. The lawmakers still made their way to the junction leading to the UC headquarters. Though they managed to get to this point, they were still not allowed entry. The minority leader, Mr. Haruna Idrisu, then asked for a representative of the UC to come and receive their petition. If you are taking the petition, come and take it. If the EC said they would come, come and tell me for the record that they said in December, then I'll go away with that If there has been a war, in this country, and many people had died, we would have fought for nothing because NDC lied to Ghanaians. They knew they didn't have any evidence, but because just because of selfish interest and political power, they were prepared to jeopardize the peace and stability in the country, even when they knew they didn't have any evidence. In effect, the NDC has sought to take the entire nation to ransom for their electoral defeat. Undoubtedly, they wanted to make this country ungovernable. The NDC induced unnecessary tension was indeed intended to destabilize the country and scare investors, both of which have had adverse impact on the, Ghana, on the Ghanaian economy to date. After intense public opprobrium against their undemocratic and violent conduct, the NDC decided belatedly to challenge the outcome of the election by filing a presidential election petition at the Supreme Court, even when Chachuchi Kata, their lawyer, had advised them otherwise, as, admit, as admitted by Mr. Isidun Ketia. Undoubtedly, they deliberately wasted the court's time for months with their own meritorious petition. Even the media was not spared of the NDC on justified attacks. Colleagues from the media, as you recall, reporters from UTV, CTFM, and other media houses were physically attacked for their coverage of the 2020 general elections and subsequent election petition. And you are all witness to that. We therefore wish to reiterate our demand for John Dramani Mahama and the NDC leadership on account of their own confession to render an unqualified apology first to the nation judiciary, which they have bastardized without justification, and to the rest of the country for wasting our precious time and creating unnecessary tension in the aftermath of the 2020 general election. They must render an unqualified apology to the good people of Ghana. We, are we therefore, and of particular concern to us is former President Jomama condescending 
description of the respected judges of the Supreme Court and referring to them as unanimous FC. Very, very, very. Wow. Your mama forgets that it was the same court that affirmed his electoral victory in 2023, in 2013. Strangely, your mama and the NDC didn't have any problem when he was confirmed by the Supreme Court in 2013. The leadership of the MPP has also taken notice of a comment passed by the NDC national chairman, Mr. John C. C. Ketia, during his victory speech at the party national delegates congress. To the shock of many Ghanaians, he boldly said the NDC is prepared to sacrifice everything, including human lives, to recapture power in 2024. And the path will not be smooth, but we will stand up to the challenge. And we are prepared to sacrifice everything. And I mean everything, including lives. I mean everything, including lives. On account of the foregoing, the MPP condemns strongly this nation reckless comments and employs other political watches, the media, National Peace Council, civil society organization, National House of Chiefs, the Christian Council of Ghana, the Office of the National Chief Imam, the Diplomatic Committee, committee community, and indeed, all well-meaning Ghanaians to join us in demanding an unqualified apology from John Mahama, Esiedu Ketia, and the NDC for their unpatriotic and disgraceful conduct, which portend a great danger to our democracy and security of the state. For my friend Fifi Kwete, you know, I became general secretary before you, so I'm your senior. <laughs> uh, uh, so, so my, my, my friendly advice to you is that your name is so associated with propaganda in Ghana politics. <laughs> and uh, from propaganda secretary to general secretary, we hope that you know there's a difference between propaganda and administrator. <laughs> and we pray that you learn lesson, particularly when you were appointed Deputy Minister of State, uh, uh, I think Minister of State of, at Finance. And if you recall, when you appear before the appointment committee in Parliament, it is on record that uh, you had to render several apologies for the many propaganda and lies that you told them when you were then the propaganda secretary of the NDC. Again, it, of course, it is, it is on record that you could not even substantiate any of your allegations against the MPP, including your wide claims that President Kofo had stolen and sold the entire gold reserve of Ghana. Oh. And that Ghana was a cocaine-induced country which was bequeathed to the NDC in 2009. Mr. Fifi Kote, you had to eat the humble pie to your own publication when you were editor of Crystal, Len Crystal Clear Lens, when you made several fake uh, reportage, some including a detailed fake forest account allegedly owned by former appointees of Kofu administration. Research record. That you all know. It will be interesting to have me as general secretary of MPP and my brother Fifi Kwete as general secretary of the NDC. Yes, 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 yes. To conclude, the MPP warmly welcomes the new leadership of the NDC to the political table. As confirmed by our national chairman, Mr. Stephen Ayesu in team, we appreciate their difficulty in collating elections over the years. And as a party, and for the sake of our country's democracy, and also to prevent them from telling their supporters to go on the street to cause mayhem when they have no evidence, we have decided to offer 
it what we lawyers call pro bono, freely. The technical support to assist them in how to collect results in elections. For us, we are ready to engage them on politics of issues and not propaganda and deceit. We invite them to debate us on the records of good governance to enable good people of Ghana to make informed decisions in 2024. Finally, we appeal to the Ghanaian populace to be patient and have confidence in the MPP government, especially when its remedial intervention to social and economic conditions in the country are gradually yielding results. We may not be out of the woods yet, but we are definitely on track to restoring our country to the path of sustained growth and prosperity. On behalf of our national chairman, Mr. Steve Nayesu in team, the national executive of the new patriotic party, and our government, on the anniversary of the birth of Christ, we would like to wish all Ghanaians a Merry Christmas and a prosperous new year in advance. May God bless our homeland Ghana and make the MPP and Ghana greater and stronger. Thank you very much. Nyamwa <laughs> Na petroleum prices, as also a cost row. Na a ma man for a home eighty, na me juma musu ebre. Gana form the switch there ye as leaders of the new patriotic party. Bua hamo buy and chain, the bua sa mo freye. Say ye near buying in casa. Na a juma bia no mon bi obit me to be obit ma bua. A ma ye see the nejina. Na ma ye petroleum prices are about for me so eti me aba. And pa ye part to ah you are Stephen in team down no any national officers. It to one among be bri and no man penny and a pound for kushia ye it do un come on. And tia ne say ye na di tum se petroleum prices a baform na se si dino enya hua ding na a stabilize ya ne se babon tin na ye catch em se smana mos my ye to one among and the whole so and for son as I see about. And tea now, your better man penyasi, nyasa, I said, they say, and no more what two are wabwama, sick as seven age nano, now feels wabwama, petroleum prices ever from no, on top also, nembra from quite even more. Now, dear one, they say, ye, 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 Mobile Kaya, a brand no more wide day na see the now what they perform na I feel so petroleum prices boss no almost a pa by any pa a to trap boy and then na petrol boy perform and then na see the nanya who are dino and this is for seeing Frabine a mind a shape a brand no man we are dindy Frabine na no more perform the air in Frabine and you want what in send this year natural signing news or motive a toss with him. Yet, you have to say, you share a man's cassette, my man who are dinner. Never bribe a woman now, which a womb. Young cassette, you're free and which a moon. Never moon. Quiet and numb so, and then said the other to no man. You did just say, and retail mono, or man and to my pine befers, a befers, a befers, a fefra. Nay, you have to say, before I said, Covid, ya are your body, baby, you are some man, same hang down. Nay, in Ghana, baby, and economy, no, I could do. Sabre and Yabekaya, near the free senior high school, ba. Sabre and Yabekaya, now one district, one factory, or ever planting for food and jobs, one coincidence, one blunt. Now Ghana's economy was one of the most fastest growing economy, I know we are seeing, until the COVID buy. COVID buy with Nichino, and now buy no edition, she are buy, yes, she said, which woman, you bet me a film. I toss with you. Yen, you ask with you too. Sir, what share MPP said they are hoche woman? 
Yen ti se mbi si fo. Mo be kaya, e bra, between 2009, e ba 2016. E ra ko fo fri so, na gana ye dui me do income status. Ni e nya oyo. Ti e ndi si di e, omo ba e no mo tri ye, na gana economy ni jansho. Ni an so so, e ndi si ba e na mo mo bo ne, e nti. E fi e nai, ni e da dun so mo. E fi e nai, so mbe kaya, na o ya abman e juma ti che ni a ya fao. O ye juma yin fi e ba ku yin fi e mi e no. Ye nchi a waka. Sa abman yin be chua a kakura, bo su mi be e mi e nsa nubo chua. O se de a kani do niska, o be ti me chua. Ne si ti cha chua ni a la wans, ni e ye fi ho. Ne so so, e mpi pi a be mo, a ho che e ba ni yin fri yon po. E ne, mi no mo kase yi. Salaries, la se a ke chua e se chua a ba yin juma e fo no. En kem, ye chua ye chua ni yin a so so. E to su bi yom, and this a pencil, ni a nyak can near a crown for an edgema. And then peep your bind, a hotel cost will be asking in an or my economy I didn't know, and them no cassay, your cania, it's in the edgema. And see a no, a daddy, a dear dancer said, See a cup party or bits may boom my party to bits, Mrs. Shah about Ghana for now boom or Ghana for a year and peep and then this. A beam and chair now. NDC, ama yo kono, eko tuwa ba. Na ebe jina, ye party, ye national chairman, nem, ye rastif na yesu in team. Abo ma baso, se omo ti ma tuwa ba, na omo ti me yu omo national executives. Ne mom, ye ebe kaya omo, no me bi e koso. An sana, abatu ene be koso no. Ye nye nim, e no ma, e si yu o kipkus. E mran ti e tu tuwa fwa, no more bro, or more yen this before. A home sent some by ye. Now ye MPP as a political party, and ye one one. And we say, Oh, my penny that that is Excellency John Mama. Or no, I did too, me say, Say ye a cup party at Bassa Bassa, some ye a cup party at to trust some yomo da, a yen this party no. And see, and ye one one say, Oh, more call Congress, oh, Cape Coast, um, Cotraba, now Bassa Bassa, a buy ye. Ye be first side, a cunya also. Ghana police for at the picture bar. And this is the picture of the picture of the picture of the picture of the Police of the picture 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 of the Ah, and ne all you nama bontia mi nim se central for mo somwo. And se ma wo kan e bi ni se end this omo ko 2022 elections a ye ko to abani wi ye no. Omo aji tu mi se abani omo jincho. Omo we poto o. Ne on so so ni ngwa se di feri enti. No se omo ya kakabe in se mo. E ma bra no omo nim se omo ni ni na so bi ya no. E kache omo chita afo se omo tin se abonti so. Omo nye dede, omo se norma. Omo she ties, omo nyu tu tra sem. Ema ye nyine ni mtensina e ba o memu ha. Ni nyan asusu, ne endi si fon pinu fon ni se omo ni nyan asubi ya. Omo mra sebe ja fo, na ye ra aru na ijusu da anon. E so so, e fo a ni nyu amo e dinechi. So omo nye demonstration, a bra anon omo ni permit bi ya. E nanti fo mi parliament, e ko electoral commission office. The National Democratic Congress NDC legislators started their walk from Parliament House through Ridge to the headquarters of the Electoral Commission in Africa. At the Ridge roundabout, they were met by the police who asked them not to go beyond the barricade they had created. Not happy with this instruction, the group tried to go a bit further, which resulted in a scuffle. After the minority members pushed through at the ridge roundabout, the police stopped them once again. Diplomatic call. I could can send for judicial no. I can send for elections no. Ni ni echi ni ano. Ni end this before ni mse. No mu ni mse. O mu ni ni asubi ya. Enti mi ni amu central for ni Ghana for. Asima ye busa ni se. Enti end this before. Di amu ye ye. 
Can I make a year more for free? And I can talk as you or memoir. Cassabi, Mommy, you can come home, I can talk, Nigeria, so be a inso. And there, we need party, or Miss Omas Abbey for Mano, twenty twenty four. The Ghana for Munya, I ain't seen you when this before, so buy an old muscle. I just will be him. Your friend Ghana, a cocoa waha civil society for. Your friend Christian Council for. Your friend members of the diplomatic community. Your friend National House of Chiefs. Your friend Momo Central for. Your friend will be as a young friend this is for. No more Pagana for a chop. A mumbra, no more for that one by any asset, no more yen and tray. Judges for me do a matum or my idea. And to Ghana for a day and find chum. Yes, she said national chairman or then this year, no, no, a bit this year, no Na mi wie kra no na mi a mi nua fifi kweti eh we did general secretary now nyan di bi nti we me see we 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 me junior na me o senior nti o senior futu ka kra me de me ma one se akonya na fe na wa ba nti ama me che no makakra na position na wa be nya se se no eh we ne ne se wa di position me na propaganda secretary we no any propaganda, sir. Say no, we are administrator of a major political party. No, maybe, ah, say, be we, yeah, yeah, and eh, now no call eh, parliament appointment committee. Our co patch, okay, can't say, sir, 2008, or my pinnacle for a year gun a gold in a or my pinnacle for a be accounts be. Ah, a war has to be brigum at the appointees. I'm a pink of five parents with Dean, but to a bontain. A can't seem to be a chill number patch. We are best row. Say, baby, I was doing the propaganda there, and then baby, I got a one on Mwa. And see, we are ready as a political party, say, you're near this before a big debating matters of substance on records and achievements. Say about what my Ghana for it may decide in 2024 between MPP and NDC for why and they don't manage sending sir with Timmy Juma. Say about that when you are massy, say my back home, your mammon yama ma fish your pa, your mammon yama ma fish your pa, say my bar. Now may suffer, sir, could you so as Sam said, a petrol bore about form in himself, dollar, and also so, and what number form, Sydney and what name. And Nam Sansunti, a shame boy at Tetuso. And Tia Bessre, Yen Yamwa, or Moton, my dear, ye traders, Mamoton Smet, Mamoton Iron Ross, Plywood, go to for any trade union senior, so Mam when your best sermon, one for my noon tomb, now Mosomotum Romaso, say Bebwa Magana, Yen Yet my day, Akoyanum, and Damunia Mas. When I'm dressing question. Thank you very much, uh, the General Secretary of the New Patriotic Party. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for paying uh, very close attention. Um, where we are now, I think we'll blend the questions. Uh, he would answer both in, in the local language and in English as well. But on balance, we have seen on evidence that the NDC uh, when it comes to the management of the economy of Ghana, the data suggests, and it's evident, um, you in the media know better that the MPP is a better manager, managers of the economy than the NDC. And we also, in this statement, you saw that the NDC created an impression in this country, very false impression, almost uh, launching all of us into chaos after the 2020 election, suggesting that they had won the elections allowed their followers to go on the street. But the most uh, egregious of all was the members of parliament of the NDC led by their, their leader in parliament, Honorable Haruna Idrisu, to storm uh, the EC premises demanding that they had won the elections. Meanwhile, they know that they had not won the election, that they had lost the elections. 
And now I'm telling you that this is very revealing about the NDC the party, the orientation, and what they're about. Uh, we thank our general secretary for bringing that to light for us. And also the former president, we think that it's very important that we underscore that point. He's led this country before. Uh, the structure of our government is equal uh, balance between the three arms of government. The judiciary is a serious arm of government. He's maligned them. He's besmirched their character. He said things about them that he knows is not true, at least according to the chairman of his party, the former general secretary, uh, Mr. Johnson, Asiedunket, are saying that they didn't have any evidence. Now, on, so on account of that no evidence case they took to court, the former president describes the judiciary, the Supreme Court, as a unanimous FC, suggesting that they did a botched job. They didn't do a good job. Meanwhile, he knows that he brought a bad case, a frivolous case, to the court. The chairman, Asedu Nketia, also, in accepting um, his office, talked to us about their being on a, on a quest for a second independence of this country. Nothing can be offensive that, as a country, an independent country, a political party, just merely by winning the chairmanship of a political party, suggests to us that they are en route to earn Ghana a second independence. That, for me, is signaling some very bad and dangerous future for us, a posture that we shouldn't encourage for the NDC. We need to know and ask them, you in the media, to ask them, what is this second independence? What is it going to take? We heard him say that they are willing to sacrifice everything, including lives. Is that what they are coming to do? Is that still democracy? Thank you, General Secretary, for bringing this very insightful revelations to us. Members of the media, uh, we'll open it up for a few questions. Uh, General, question with, uh, General Secretary will take a few questions, not more than five. I will take first round of two questions and then three in the last part. Yes. Sorry? For, please name your station and... Uh,